Hi, welcome to Simply Country Cooking. Um, today we're not going to actually be making nothing in the kitchen. We're just going to talk about some things you need in your kitchen that will make cooking, baking, doing whatever you're doing in the kitchen a little bit easier. Um, some of these things you might have, some of them you may not have. Uh, you can go out and find them at thrift stores, garage sales. You can go on Marketplace, um, find them there, uh, buy them new on Amazon. You don't have to have them, but a lot of these things will make working in your kitchen a lot easier. So the first thing I want to talk about is cutting boards. Every kitchen needs a good cutting board. I have multiple cutting boards in my kitchen. And um, in my kitchen at home, I have a round cutting board that sits right next to my sink. And I use that to, for cutting up vegetables, whatever I need to do. And it also is very handy if I have a hot pot that comes off the stove, I can set it right on there and not have to worry about sitting it on my counters. And uh, it's really handy to have it there. Um, this is a wood cutting board that I have here. And this is some sort of a plastic cutting board. I'm not sure exactly what it's made out of. Um, I washed this in the dishwasher. This I would just wash with a uh, rag that's been soaked in probably a little bit of dishwater and Clorox. It's important to get your cu cutting boards clean. Um, cause this cutting board, this cutting board, any cutting board you use, things can penetrate them, and unless you're using a marble cutting board. So it is important to use um, Clorox wet wipe, a wash rag soaked when dish soap and Clorox, and it is important to clean them very good after you use them. If you have some like this, I throw them in the dishwasher and I feel like after it comes out of the dishwasher, safe to use. So that's our cutting boards, and we'll go from cutting boards tonight because we use them on the cutting boards and what I have found is I prefer uh, Cutco brand knives there's tons of knives out there but it's important to have a good sharp knife um, it'll make everything you do in your kitchen so much easier um, the, in, this, in this knife set we have like a paring knife we have this is my favorite knife I like to use this for cutting my vegetables my meat um, there's also a knife in here that you can use to cut bread. It's serrated, so it'll cut really soft bread. Um, there's some carvers in here, and there's some trimmers in here. Um, there's just a little bit of everything, and then um, we have a couple forks as well. And when they come in a block like this, it's handy because they're they're right there at you know the end of your fingers. You can grab them quick, and they stay pretty clean for the most part. You're not having at, in my kitchen at home, I have my block with my knives sets right next to my stovetop. So my knives are literally hand reach away and that's, that's really handy. So get yourself a good set of knives. Um, there again, you can find knives lots of places. And a set like this new costs lots of money, but I shopped around, found a bargain on them and it's a great investment. And it's something that you really, really need to have in your kitchen. Anybody that's ever tried to cut a tomato with a dull knife will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so the next thing I want to talk about is hot pads and trivets. And in my kitchen, I like silicone. Um, this is the hot or the trivets that I like, and the reason I like these is because I only brought one to show you today, but I have multiples of these, and I keep them in the drawer. I have a drawer that's located right between my stove and my oven, and I have multiple ones of these in there. And what I like about them is that they, they're small. They fold up, and this is all there is. But when you wanna use them, you pull them out, you can make it to where you can set two pans on there, you can set a cookie sheet on there, you can fold it down and just put one pan on there, you can use multiples together, and they're pretty much destruct proof. I mean, they're, they're really nice. So that's my trivet of choice. And same thing with the hot glove. It's made out of uh, silicone, I would say. I have one for this hand, I have one for the other hand. I didn't bring them both. So I do have a right hand and a left hand. And they are different. So on this side, it's more of a rubbery silicone feel. And on this side, it's more of a kind of like a, it's not really a material, but it's made to be worn right and left. And I do have two of them. And I, I use them all the time. I can tell you though, I, if you're gonna use them and carry something really hot for more than about a minute or two, they will penetrate through the silicone in your hand, will get hot. 
They're designed to take things out of the oven and move them to a counter or a cooling rack or something like that. But um, invest in a good hot pad, cooking pad. It's good to have. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is a digital thermometer. And it took me a while to figure out how handy these are and how useful they are in a kitchen. Um, actually, it took when I started cooking on my Blackstone outside is when I decided that I needed one of these for, for the temperature of certain meats. And I was guilty. I, whenever I cooked a steak, a pork chop, anything I cooked on the grill, I was guilty. I overcooked it because I was so worried about eating raw meat and I would kill them. I mean, I would serve them well, well done. And anybody knows when you eat a, a steak, you don't want to eat a steak well done. So a digital thermometer, they touch a button, they turn on, you stick this probe into whatever you're wanting to know the temperature of to about the halfway point. So if it's a piece of steak about so thick, you'd stick that in about halfway. Steaks, I like to cook my steaks at about 135. The other thing I use this for all the time is when I make creme brulee. Creme brulee is a real funny thing. If you overcook it, it'll taste like eggs. If you undercook it, it'll be soup. So creme brulee is done when it registers between 170 and 175. This is crucial when you make creme brulee. So these cheap, you can get them for five or six dollars, all different types, but I would say invest in a digital thermometer. It's something you really need to have in your kitchen. So. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is it's called an immersion blender. And this little device has two attachments here. And this is what I would call something you can use when a whisk, a hand whisk ain't quite enough, but a hand mixer's too much. This is what you want. This just pops on here real easy like that. So say I wanted to make a smoothie, I would just put this attachment on. It has one little blade in here. I'd put whatever I was going to make my smoothie out of, some frozen fruit, some almond milk, some sweetener, and just up and down in that, in that mug, and my smoothie would be done in about a minute. Um, if you need to whip up, say you want scrambled eggs, you want to whip up your scrambled eggs. A lot of times you can hand mix them, but if you want to give it just a little bit more than that, you put on the whisk attachment. Same thing, you just push this button and whisk it right up. Now, I wouldn't advise putting either one of these attachments in the dishwasher. I would hand wash these, but um, I keep this little immersion blender in that drawer where I keep my hot pads. It's right there between my oven and my stove. And I say it's a, it's a device that I probably use uh, once or twice a week. So if you can invest in an immersion blender, there again, they're not super expensive, but it's something really, really handy to have in your kitchen. So. Um, we're going to take a break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about some more things you need in your kitchen. See you soon. KPAO Community Television, handmade in Omaha since 2013. Hi, welcome back to Simply Country Cooking, where today we're talking about handy things you need to have in your kitchen to make cooking, baking easier. And in this segment, I'm going to talk about a few more things that are just handy things to have in the kitchen. Um, I actually had talked about these in one of my very first shows I did here on Simply, Simply Country Cooking, I made a pumpkin pie. These are silicone pie crust covers. And what they do is you make your pie, and your pie's all done, you're ready to go in the oven, and you would just put these on the edge of your, I don't have a pie here to show you, but you would just arrange these around the edge of your pie like so. And what they're designed to do is they will keep your pie crust from getting too well done, so in other words, it won't burn. And they're designed with these little handles to where when you get to like the last five or ten minutes and you want your crust to actually get a little brown to it, you would just reach in and you probably wouldn't want to do it with your bare hand because they're going to be pretty hot. 
you want to use a pot holder, you would just reach in and take them off and let your crust bake and voila. But silicone pie crust covers, they're again, not very expensive. Something that's really, really handy to have in your kitchen. So get some pie crust covers. Our next thing is going to be just a simple set of salt and pepper shakers. I have a set of salt and pepper shakers that sit on my stove top. They never leave there. I have another set that goes on the table when we eat, but I always have salt and pepper within my reach. And um, it's just one of those things that every kitchen should have your, and I know some of the cooks, Pioneer Woman and some of them, they actually use like bowls because they like to do pinches and dashes. I'm okay with salt and pepper shakers. I don't like the idea of my salt and pepper setting out uncovered, so that's why I prefer to use a holter, but everybody has to invest in a set of salt and pepper shakers, which probably already have them, but the key thing is, is having them where they're conveniently located. Set them on your stove top so that they're handy whenever you need them. Next thing we're gonna talk about, cookie sheets. If you've ever been to a cooking store or even just a big box store or discount store, you know there's lots and lots and lots of cookie sheets. They come in all sizes, shapes. There's different kinds. There's non-stick kind. There's kind that are made where they have air inside of them. Um, I prefer just a standard cookie sheet, nothing fancy. Um, I normally don't use the silicone mats that some people use. There again, that's personal preference. If you like to use the silicone mats, I say use them. Um, when I have an item that is going to be a sticky mess or a chance it could stick, my go-to is non-stick foil. I find that to be even better than wax paper or parchment paper or the silicone mats. But that's my personal preference. That's one of those deals as you cook, you'll figure out what works for you. Just like your cookie sheets, you'll figure out which cookie sheets. And for me, cookie sheets are one of those things that after a while they get pretty pretty grummy looking no matter how much you scour them they're just gonna they're just gonna accumulate these are are nice and new so these look wonderful but um my cookie sheets cookie sheets look like my pizza stone they're seasoned so after you know a little while you got to go buy new ones you got to go buy new ones because believe it or not the reason why pans are shiny silver is because that's what helps things cook so if your cookie sheet starts getting really nasty ugly and black it's not gonna, it's gonna tend to burn things. So it's important to have a nice shiny surface when you're gonna cook on a cookie sheet. Just something to keep in mind. All right, so that brings us to my pizza stone. And I love cooking with my pizza stone. It's the only stone I use. Now, some companies make all sorts of stoneware. They make bread pans, casserole pans, all sorts of different things made out of stone. And it is just what it says. It's, it's basically a stone and it radiates heat. It's a conductor of heat way better than a metal pan. So when you make a pizza on this, it makes the crust much crispier and it stays hot a lot longer. So you gotta be careful you don't burn things when you use a stone. And as you can see, my stone is well seasoned. That's what all this discoloration is around the edges. I've seen stones that are that way on the whole thing. I do scrub my stone when I'm done using it. I usually put it in the sink with some soapy water and I take a scratch pad and I just clean it off. I mean, I don't work to scour off any of this because you do want your stone seasoned. It's just like a cast iron pan. It's important to have it seasoned. That keeps things from sticking. And again, it's one of those things, if you have one, fine. If you want to get one, you can find them anywhere. Um, I'm sure, you know, you can, you might even be able to look on some of the marketplaces and find used ones where people don't want them no more. Because a lot of people don't like to cook with stones because you do have to watch your temperature and you do have to watch your cooking time. It does change it. So that is another one of those things in my kitchen that I have to have. And now we're going to move on to, this is another thing that sets right next to my stove at home, is my utensil holder. Now here in the studio, I actually have enough room that I have Actually, I have three utensil holders. I have this one here, which holds strictly utensils, and I have this one here that holds strictly spatulas. And in your utensil holder, you know you're gonna wanna have some spoons, some spatulas, some whisk, I have a ladle, I have a set of th tongs. Um, you know, you're just gonna want 
a fork, another spatula, or flipper, you're just going to want to put things in there that you're going to want to use all the time and have them in arm's reach. Now, this one is all spatulas. And in, in my house, I don't think you can ever have enough spatulas because when I'm cooking, I'll use a spatula for something, I'll do something with it, and boom, I throw it in the sink. Oh, and now I've got to get another spatula. I use it, boom, throw it in the sink. And before you know it, I went through four or five spatulas. So the more spatulas you have, the better. There again, spatulas are cheap. You can find them anywhere. Um, this is a rubber basting brush, basting whether you're putting butter on a turkey, putting butter on garlic bread. It's made out of silicone. You wash this in the dishwasher, comes out just like brand new. So great thing, great thing to have a silicone baster. Now what I will tell you too, is if you are gonna set your utensils next to your stovetop, every so often you need to take everything out, put it in the dishwasher along with the container and wash it. Because when it sits next to your stove, it is going to get greasy. And when things get greasy, they collect dust and dirt and they get dirty. So take, take your utensils, like I said, depends on how much you use your kitchen. If you're frying something on your stove daily, I would say you wanna wash your utensils probably once a month. But that's what I would do. I'm gonna be back here in just a minute to we'll talk about a few more things. We'll see you when we come back. Thank you. I love to run, but I can't walk a straight line. It's because of my brain. It's been damaged. My previous owner left me unconscious. I still don't know what I did to make her so angry that night. Amazing people found me and gently nursed me back to health. They gave me my second chance. I once overheard a child ask if I'd walk straight again when I got to heaven. Maybe, but right now, I'm enjoying my little piece of heaven on earth. Hi, welcome back to Simply Country Cooking. And um, on this show, we've been talking about things you need to have in your kitchen. Um, not necessary, but just giving you uh, some tips and pointers, I'll, I'll say. Next thing we're going to talk about is dishcloths, hand towels, dish towels. Um, I prefer to use what I call a wash rag. It's kind of slang. Um, a washcloth. I prefer to use that in my kitchen. Some people don't like them. They say they, they, they carry germs and they're nasty and they're dirty. I prefer a good dishcloth. Um, you know, people complain that they, they get sour smelling because you use them and then if they don't get rinsed out properly, they smell. The way I prevent that from happening at my house is in my kitchen sink when I make a, a sink full of dishes and it's just protocol in my house. Whenever I'm cooking, doing anything in the kitchen, I make a sink full of dish soap because it's important to me to be able to, be able to if I need to wipe a counter down or wipe my hands off, I want to have a sink full of dish soap. I use Dawn dish soap and a little bit of Clorox every time I make a, a sink full of dish soap. So it's pretty safe to say with that little bit of Clorox in there, my dish towels or dish rags don't get stinky, they don't get sour. I feel like they're pretty well germ free because of the Clorox that's in there. And then I use them, like I said, I use them to wipe my hard surfaces down. And I feel with like that, when you use that Clorox in there, you're disinfecting, you're getting the germs all really well. The next thing is a hand towel. And in my house, a hand towel lasts about one day because I live with men who come in and think my kitchen sink is where they need to scrub their hands. So they scrub their hands. And I don't quite understand this because if they scrub their hands, why would there be dirt on my, on my hand towel after they've washed their hands? But inevitably there is. So I usually have a, a clean hand towel every day. I usually, first thing in the morning, I reach in the drawer, I get a hand towel out, put a fresh hand towel out. Now, this is what I call a dish towel. And there is a difference a hand towel and a dish towel. I would not want to dry my dishes or use it on anything sanitary after my husband just come in and wiped his greasy hands on it. So there is a difference between a hand towel and a dish towel. Now a dish towel is going to be a lighter weight material. It's going to be way bigger than our hand towel. And this actual dish towel holds a lot of meaning to me. This was a dish towel my grandma Vi made for me when I got married 38 years ago. So this dish towel's old and been used a lot, as you can see. 
And what I will use a dish towel for, they have multiple uses, is say I'm gonna make some bread. I make my bread, I put it in a bowl, and we all know bread needs to rise. I will cover that bowl with this dish towel, and I will let that bread rise either in the oven, on warm, just because it needs to be in a warm place, or if it's hot in my house, we'll just leave it on the counter and we'll raise there. It protects the dough from anything flying in it. If the dough comes up and touches it, it won't stick to it. Um, you know, so it, I, that's one of the main purposes a dish towel has, other than, you know, at the holidays, you get out your good dishes and your aunt and your mom are washing and drying your dishes. This is what you want them to dry your dishes with, a dish towel. There is a difference, there is a difference. Um, so that was your lesson on a hand towel, a dish towel, and a dish rag. So now we're gonna move on to this little handy device. This is called a scraper chopper. Um, great device. Let's say we've just chopped up a whole bunch of onions on our, on our uh, cutting board, and we wanna scoop them up and put them in our, our fry pan. You just take them, and you scoop them up, and they all mound up on here, you dump them in. Or if you need to chop something, it does have a blade, so to speak. It's not a super sharp blade, but if you need to get something just a little chop, you can chop with it. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but it also has some measuring devices here, measuring lines. So if you were, say, making um, pretzels and you needed to roll them out to, say, six inches or something, you would be able to use this. This is, this is exactly six inches. So handy little device, chopper scraper. Get them anywhere. My next thing is measuring spoons. Measuring spoons are just like spatulas. You cannot have enough measuring spoons. Because I do the same thing with these as I do with spatulas. I use them, throw them in the sink. Got to get another set. I probably, in my kitchen, I probably have six or seven sets of measuring spoons. Measuring spoons will have a tablespoon, a teaspoon, a half teaspoon, and a quarter teaspoon. Now you can get some sets that will have other measurements aside from that. I've seen some that will have a two tablespoon measurement, but you know, these are cheap. You can buy these cheap, 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 and I would say get a couple sets of them if you can. They're handy to have. So we'll move from our, our measuring spoons to our measuring cups. And measuring cups, for me, I don't prefer measuring cups that are on a ring and all held together. I need my measuring spoons to be individual. So like this set here, these all come apart. And if I need to use my one cup, actually this is, this is one and a half cup. This is my one cup. But if I wanna scoop into some flour or some sugar, I don't have all these other measuring cups hanging off of a ring. So I think these might have come on a ring and I took the ring off, but that's just a hint I would give. I sometimes see people cook and they'll have the whole set and they'll be fumbling around they'll be trying not to get the other ones and whatever they're doing if you get a set and they're ringed together take the ring off use them individually it makes it so much easier and there again wouldn't hurt to have a couple sets of of, of measuring cups there's another item too thrift stores garage sales you can find a lot of stuff like that at those places so if you can invest in more than one set of them this is our core, and we've talked about this before on the show. I did some strawberries. This little device has, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it has like a little serrated edge on it. And I use that to take out the core of like strawberries. You could use it on other items too. You could use it probably on like a tomato to take the core and the stem out. It's a core stemmer. I'm guessing a 99 cent deal, but super, super handy to have in your kitchen. All right, our next item looks like a weapon of destruction, but really it's not. This is just kitchen forks is what they're called, and you would use these for lifting a heavy piece of meat out of a roasting pan, so like a turkey. Um, I'm gonna tell you a roast, but at my house, my roast, when I cook a roast, I cook a roast to where it falls apart, so as soon as we go in to get the roast, it just falls into a million pieces. But for a turkey or a chicken, or something large like that that's gonna to hold together. You go in from one side, you go in from the other side. These things are magic. So kitchen forks, you can find them anywhere. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is a egg slicer dicer, egg cutter, whatever you wanna call it. And 
every kitchen should have one of these, but you know, you, if you need to cut your egg, you can cut it by hand, but the way I usually use an egg slicer like this is I would set the egg, hard boiled egg on here. I would take this down over it first, and then I would pick it up and bring it over here and set it in here, and then I would do that side, and then I would just take this and dump it in my bowl, and you'd have a really nice chopped and sliced hard boiled egg. Another handy thing to have in your kitchen. This is something in my kitchen I could not live without. It's a gravy maker, gravy shaker, gravy maker, whatever you want to call it. That's all it's used for. Um, in my kitchen, that's all it's used for. What you do is say you're making gravy, and we all know when you make gravy, gravy is nothing more than flour and cold water. And you put your flour in, probably fill your, your gravy shaker up to about a quarter cup of flour, fill it two thirds of the way up with cold water. I'm really stressing cold water. If you put hot water with flour, you will have lumpy gravy. It's got to be cold. You put your lid back on it and give it a good shake. And then that's what this top thing's for is at that point, then you dump it into your grease drippings and that's how you make your gravy. So this particular brand, I believe is Tupperware. And I'm gonna guess this is probably as old as my marriage. I've had this probably since I've gotten married. So this is a must have. And real quick, we're about out of time here. I wanna talk about this device right here. If you need to measure peanut butter, everybody needs one of these. What you do is you push down to your measurement. The measurements are on the side. So say if we need a cup of peanut butter, it's set right at a cup. You fill this up with your peanut butter. Once you get it packed in there nice, you tip it over, push it out, and there's not one ounce of peanut butter left in that thing. So with that being said, we're gonna have to come to a close today. I hope these tips have helped. Um, periodically, I'll try to come back on and we'll talk about some other things that are handy in the kitchen. Um, until then, I hope everybody stays cool. We're in the heat of the summer and I hope everybody is surviving the corona. Hopefully we'll get back to normal soon and in the meantime everybody take care and I'll see you soon.